Early in my opening statement this evening, the ghouls are back. But while we try and discuss how we can change our country for the better, the disruption brigade, the liberal latrines, the opposition's clown clan are back at it again, trying to utilize the moment for their petty political gain, hoping that some or how, if they create enough chaos, uh, they will be in power the very next day, despite the fact that it will never happen. Remember, these ghouls were acting as if they were never given power. In fact, the whole clan was in control just three years back and failed to do anything to better this country. Just because the UNP became the SJB, just because Ranil became Sajid, just because one loser took over from another loser, their values of tearing this country apart have been cherished right throughout. The president was right to call out on these ghouls and expose their double standards. In a recent speech, the president made these remarks. Listen in. <laughs> Well, right now, the country is at a very tough spot economically, socially, and most importantly, health wise. Remember back when the UNP led coalition presented their economic policy more than 15 times? The only solution was to tax you and me to death to scrape every little saving we had so that the incompetent jokers now in the opposition could just recover the loss they made to the country through the central bank bond scam. That was their economic plan. And this government has come up with a plan that has not taxed you and me dry, yet keep the country running. One of the key challenges this government will have to face is to change that pile of sand now at the port city area into a mega city that will be Sri Lanka's and South Asia's economic hub. This challenge is not an easy one. How can we create investor confidence, boost economic prosperity and create a system that all Sri Lankans benefit rather than the elite? I hope to discuss all those with my guest tonight, the Chairman of the Board of Investment in Sri Lanka, Sanjay Mohtala, in a moment. But first, joining me now is our own um, Danidhu Tharamasam with a look at tonight's uh, real story. Good to see you, Danidhu. Um, the, uh, the budget was presented last week. Uh, the government wanted to showcase to the world saying, you know, this is exactly what we want to do. What is your focus tonight on your real story? My, um, my focus is actually a key focus of the budget has also really prioritized and the country has prioritized for quite some time and that has been foreign direct investments. Now investments, particularly foreign direct investment, would iron out quite a few monetary issues our country is facing. This has been continuously identified by current efforts by the government which have in certain lights fallen between the cracks of public assessment. Immediately prior to the budget of 2022, the Central Bank of Sri Lanka released a study on the economic highlights of the country over the past term. The fundamental observation of a strong recovery of the country in the post-pandemic period was quite evident. This fact is available in the assessment of the quarterly performance of GDP. This has been further supported by an extremely successful vaccination drive that has surpassed multiple countries with far better economic situations. Sri Lanka has for a long time faced issues pertaining to legal red tapes that have existed in doing business. An aspect that the government has taken quite seriously, as some of the key measures the state has taken is to give clarity to long-term investors. This has shown some strong results given the powerful economic comeback in the last few quarters of 2021 and the expected economic growth of 6% by 2022. With the beginning of former state minister and current central bank governor Ajit Nimad Kabra's term in office, a six-month structured strategy was provided to investors and the general public as to which tools will be used in the CBSL in order to regain a sense of financial stability. This was complemented with the 2022 budget, which will be discussed later on. A key aspect of the six-month roadmap was the proposition of tax measures that were structured in a way to retain foreign investments. However, another region Sri Lanka is focusing on is rebuilding its foreign currency crunch that the state has had to face given the mismanagement of resources by past administrations 
and the pandemic situation within the country. In order to understand the efforts by the government to maximize investments, one key aspect is assessing the Inland Revenue Act No. 10 of 2021, which amended No. 24 of 2017. A large number of tax concessions and efforts to rebuild domestic and foreign investment avenues were witnessed. Under the new Act, agri-farming was exempt from taxation up until 2024. Ports and Airports Development Levy, also known as PAL, was exempted for the importation of project-related capital goods by BOI Enterprises for the use in any project of such enterprise having a capital investment of not less than 50 million US dollars in a stage-wise process during the project implementation or construction period. Amongst these measures, the Invest Sri Lanka Forum, organized by the Securities and Exchange Commission of the country, alongside the Columbus Stock Exchange, has been active and conducted a forum last week in Dubai. It was recognized within this forum that the Columbus Stock Exchange has seen over 50,000 investors this year, jumping from 12,000 in 2020. This is a colossal number given the fact that the year hasn't ended as of yet. In the second quarter of the calendar this year, listed companies recorded revenues of 940 billion rupees and profits after tax of 78 billion rupees, which is an all-time high. The all-share price index is up by 58% year-to-date. The more liquid S&P 20 index is up by 38%. The foreign investment strategy has been well encompassed when considering the Colombo Port City Economic Commission Act No. 11 of 2021. One key specification is the requirement made for all investment to be sourced from a foreign country, thereby making certain that the money is sourced from abroad. The first phase of the construction, which will open doors to multiple investment opportunities, is due to end by 2022, which will provide a more solid standing for international investors to bring in capital. The Port City Act was formulated under the consultation of a number of legal frameworks that govern international economic zones in multiple other countries, which provide further confidence for the country's development. The 2022 budget contained a number of positive signs that focused on redistribution of wealth from the rich sectors of society to the poor. This was well encompassed in the surcharge tax at 25% on persons with taxable income exceeding 2 billion, which will be a one-time charge and the transfer of 8.5 billion rupees from the infamous Perpetual Treasuries Limited. In terms of infrastructure development and the creation of an environment friendly for investments, a number of key budgetary allocations stand out. The allocation of 49 billion rupees for the Water for All program with the aim of providing uninterrupted clean drinkable water supply. An allocation of 68 billion rupees for the Vari Saubhagya program with the aim of developing the irrigation system. An allocation of 280 billion rupees for the National Road Development Program. Meanwhile, it is expected to develop the Colombo port as an entree port hub, the Trincomalee port as an industrial port, the Gold port as a tourist port, and the Hambandara port as a service port. Investment in infrastructure has not stopped and will be a key strength when looking at the future of doing business within Sri Lanka. Sri Lankans must use the positives available today to reset the backward mindset and begin rebuilding. Mahesh, a lot of important things to focus on in today's discussion. Indeed, um, that uh, resetting the mindset is something that we really need to focus on and try to get uh, an understanding because if we don't change that particular portion, well, we will be stuck just like we are today. All right, good stuff. Then it is time for with the real story. Let's take a short commission break. On the other side, the chairman of the Bureau of Investment in Sri Lanka, Sanjay Mahutala. This is Get Real. We'll be right back in here.